Hey everyone, it's Nathan from Rookbooks, back again with the next Pokemon from the Poker app. And this week is a two-for-one deal. We get both the male and female Nidoran, which is funny because this is back in Generation 1 when the sex differentiation for, for the two different Pokemon actually really meant something. Um, of course, now it's just part of the games, but back then this was the only real mention of the, the different uh, Pokemon sexes. All right, let's get started. It's Nidoran. We gotta wrap some Pokemon. You just do the singing. I'll take care of the hard part. Let's get it on. All right, so doing both the male and female Nidoran here. And I'm gonna start with the background. Um, I was thinking I would be starting with a forest setting, uh, something like Viridian Forest or something like that, uh, where you would find these two. Uh, but I mentioned in uh, the Diglett video that even though like these two particular ones are quite small, I wanted to put them front and center. So I was really working on a background, middle ground, foreground, and I was going to stick them right in the, in the foreground. Real quick, real, real messy sort of laying down the shapes and where the lighting might come from. Just picking my colors and trying to make really obvious to myself where I'm going to be placing the main shapes and how they're going to be interacting. Uh, so I figured they're usually drawn as a mating couple of some kind, so I decided to go with that. And in fact, researching these Pokemon was really interesting. They were way cooler than I thought they were. Their, their design was much more leathery and they, they weren't just furry little rabbits. And I didn't know that. Uh, I'd never really used them much in the games. I think I, I, actually at one time, I used uh, Nidoking, I took him all the way to the Elite Four, I won with that one, That's when I was figuring out how to use poison types and stuff, but uh, I, I liked Muck better, and then of course I used uh, Venusaur as my poison Pokemon. I was really thinking about the shape language as well for the two different characters, so obviously the male is quite clearly more jagged and pointy, whereas the female is a lot more round and uh, softer, softer sort of edges, while still being that kind of poisonous, spiky creature. Part of my process um, that I've really pushed myself for is to keep it messy as long as possible. I try to focus on the shapes and values and the color. I have seen videos that a lot of artists start in black and white and they transfer over to the color. Uh, and I really didn't like doing that. That stunted my process. I found the transition from the black and white stage into the color stage, I was fighting against myself. I think the biggest challenge was that I, I really, really liked the how the black and white was looking and then I didn't want to move into the color. Uh, even though I had decided it was a color piece at the beginning, I couldn't make that transition over. So now I just, I start with as local a color as I can and change the values um, and, and figure out what the, the light source is going to be. Is it going to be warm or cool? And, and then just kind of go from there. So my process here was a little bit different than what I usually do. So sometimes I do the line work um, and really try to figure out where those lines are going to fall. Uh, here I started with a really painterly brush. I think it's called the creamy impressionist brush uh, and just kind of lay down all the shapes try to keep it as messy for as I can for as long as possible um, and then I come in with the DG main brush from Dave Greco uh, who I've already uh, told you about and if you don't know him already definitely check him out he's awesome yeah I was thinking about the, the textures that I was going to put on these guys and when I realized that they were much more leathery than I at first thought, immediately I, I realized I was going to start getting in those you know, big folds and wrinkles in the skin, figure out where those little spikes are going to be. Keeping in mind that these are they're going to be the first evolution, I've got two more to go, so if I'm going to put it in a certain style where they're jagged and they've got lots of spikes and are a bit less cute and cuddly than their anime counterparts, I had to keep in mind that if they're going to get bigger, older, possibly more grotesque if that's the way I go with their secondary evolutions. So I didn't want to go too crazy with the amount of spike textures on their skin. It had to be 
somewhat strained. But I also knew that I was almost immediately when I started playing these, these wrinkles. I knew I was going to use an elephant skin texture. Which I get from Aaron Blaze. The design came quite naturally to me, I think. The positioning and um, the way that they kind of interacted with each other, that was quite intuitive. Their, their shapes, they really are like rabbit things, but just the way that their anatomy worked was very intuitive. Like their pudgy little appendages and their enormous heads. I really did no line work at all in this piece. Um, usually I do. I throw down the local color um, and general shapes, and then I usually go over the top of it with some line work to kind of figure out what I was getting at, but it didn't seem necessary in this piece. Not quite sure why it worked out that way, but that's what I um, ended up with. Yeah, very intuitive to blend in those shapes and all the folds and everything. Uh, they, I mean, they're not too complicated creatures, uh, so putting them together was, was fairly easy. I didn't need much construction work, and I don't leave line work in most of my pieces. I, I don't normally do uh, any kind of stylized line work. And I only really use the line work as a guide, uh, unless I was doing anime or something. So once I got to this point, I didn't see any reason to add any lines. I already knew where I was going. And the, the next step would, was textures. I already knew that I was going to be putting down those elephant textures, and, and they would cover up any line work right away anyway. The one thing with texture is that you, you do, if you're going to be overlaying textures, you've got to be consistent. There is a little bit of back and forth playing around, figuring out what image works best for each little section. So here we go, I actually used a, a trunk of, uh, an elephant trunk for the, uh, for the legs. It worked really well to give those wrinkles, some real texture. And then for the rest of the skin, I wanted to be pretty restrained with it, so I used those uh, speckly, speckly bits from the elephant skin, as opposed to putting even more giant spikes all across those borders. And this is the point, I think I mentioned it in the Diglett video, where I get to a certain point where I have to render the rest of the background and figure out where how the rest of the environment is going to affect the way that they look. So right here I'm just laying in the rest of the foreground. Um, I really wanted them immersed into this environment, so having that grass up there, like they were really eating those seeds or whatever. And I did work on this piece a little bit after the video when I was putting things together. Took another look at it and added a bit more texture and worked on it just a little bit further. Sometimes I really don't know when I'm finished, um, and, and that's part of the process, I guess, is figuring out when it, it looks okay. Um, and That's a big challenge for me because I, I paint in a lot of different styles, and different styles require different levels of detail. Things were looking a bit green, so I added in a little bit of yellow for those lily tulip flower things. So I went over the top and painted some extra texture on top of those uh, textures that I overlaid. I just painted it in there. You can't just rely on the overlaid image entirely. For my shadows, and um, I do like to keep it pretty messy. With the shadows, I use a watercolor brush. It emulates that watercolor really, really well. It took me a while to figure out how to use it, but I actually practiced it when I was doing some avatar work. Um, I did study of all those avatar characters. It is up on my YouTube. Uh, but it works really well for shadows because it's a little bit messy, it gives some texture. And the same thing for when I do lighting. Uh, so that's the creamy, impressionist brush that I'm using there. That's it guys, that's this week's video. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it, I hope you're getting something out of it. If, if nothing else, just enjoying watching the process. And I'll be back next week drawing Mankey, the next one in the Pokerap. See you guys then. Catch a ball.